A power black hat can be a real but at the same time it can be a great bonding experience with those around you. With no TV or Wi-Fi, you can talk about anything like how long it might be until the power comes back on, why the power might have gone out, how long till the power returns, am I sure I check the meter box? Which is all great unless you're at home on your own. So I'm going to show you how to get some sweet tunes cranking so you don't have to sit there listening to yourself breathing. So there I am starting the day nice and early, the coffee machine is warming up, I sit down to get some work done and boom, power goes out. I do the usual in-depth diagnostic test of flicking all the switches in the house, giving friendly gestures to everything that doesn't work, power outage is confirmed. Priority one in an emergency like this is to re-establish Wi-Fi. I got this sorted using a car battery and some cables I had on hand. With Wi-Fi back up and running, there is priority two, which is music to fill the silence, the refrigerator normally covered. This is easy, you can just use your phone, which is fine for a few hours until the battery goes flat. Now the first thing you'll need for this project is a takeaway coffee cup. This won't be too hard because you'll have to order coffee out because the power is down. So in thinking about what some of the best power sources around the house are that I could use to generate some music, apart from a car battery, one that came to mind was the lithium batteries from my cordless drill. They're always charged and on standby and should last a fair while. Being 18 volts, it's an awkward voltage to power something else up, but if just using the battery with the drill, it'll be the perfect basis for our music machine. Some of the other items you'll need are some F-clamps, a plastic ruler, a variety of plastic cutlery, and some chopsticks from your takeaway lunch that you'll have to buy, and a pen lid. One that's shaped like this should do perfectly. Now let's get started. The first thing you'll have to do is grab your disposable coffee cup. Take off the lid. Now using a utility knife, we want to carefully cut the ridge off the bottom of the coffee cup. Now you have to be careful here not to cut too close to the bottom of the cup because this ridge holds the bottom in. So if you cut too close, it'll fall out. Nice. You successfully flat bottomed your coffee cup. You can now give it a little tap just to make sure it stays in okay. Maybe tap out a bit of a tune. This cup is primed for cranking out some smooth beats. Now I've just taken a quick break to eat all the icy poles in the freezer because they're all going to melt. Another part you're going to need is two pin-up board pins. Try and get the sharpest ones you can find that don't have any bends or any burrs on the end. Pick the sharpest of the two pins, then get some emery paper and put it on a hard, flat surface. Now we want to sharpen the pin further. This part's a pretty delicate process. You have to rub the pin across the emery paper in the one direction, lifting it clearly each time. Otherwise you'll put a tiny burr on the end of the pin. As you go, just slowly rotate the pin and be really consistent with the angle. Once you reckon it's pretty sharp, you want to get some fine grade steel wool. Then use this to further polish the pin so there's no little dodgy bits on the end. Now using the other pin that you collected, not the one you just sharpened, the other one that's not the sharp one, but it's still sharp, just less sharp than the one you sharpened. Carefully use the pin to punch a hole in the center of the bottom of the cup. Ah, oh, it's broken, nah. Okay, so we're going to have to glue the bottom of our cup, and the quickest drying glue would be hot glue, but we can't use a hot glue gun because there's no power. So a handy trick in this situation is to get a glue stick and a lighter, and then you can heat the glue stick and get glue. A blowtorch is quicker though. And then simply paste it around the base of your cup. If you do trim your coffee cup too close to the base, you might want to glue it with PVA to begin with for extra strength. That is if you're not in a rush for some sweet coffee cup tunes because the PVA glue will take overnight to dry. Now using that pin again, the not sharp one that's still sharp, put a hole in the center of the bottom of your coffee cup. Don't push the pin all the way through otherwise the hole will be too wide. And once again with our blowtorch glue wand, we want to heat up some more glue. And then carefully paste this around the base of the pin, but be careful not to get it on the end of the needle. While the glue is still nice and hot, grab the pin with a pair of long nose pliers and insert it through the hole in the bottom of the cup. Once you get it through the hole, give the pin a little bit of a twist just to make sure the glue takes nicely to the bottom of the cup. Then flip the cup over and what we have to do is put the needle on a bit of an angle and then just hold that angle until the glue cools. Nice, you've made yourself an anti-tip, anti-spill coffee cup. Just slam it down for no more spills on your coffee table, your new couch or your left ventricle. Back to our music conundrum. Grab your cordless drill and one of the F clamps. 
we're going to take one of the F clamps and attach it to the battery. So it's a good idea just to double check that the battery has some charge in it because you won't be able to change it after. If you need to replace it, well you kind of fuck aren't you because there's no power and the whole project's kind of a waste of time. Yeah. When putting the clamp onto the drill, we want to get the chuck of the drill as vertical as possible. But don't tighten it too much, otherwise you break it and all the battery lithium ion gods are going to come out and they're going to fuck your shit right up. We need some tunes for our machine, and I have some record vinyl music tapes on hand, luckily. These were picked up from a thrift shop years ago, and for a period they were mounted to the wall just because they look cool. And now they've been taken down and they have lots of double-sided tape stuck to the back and plaster. But we can work around that. So just having a bit of a flick through what we have on hand. We have a touch of nostalgia. It's good to get your nostalgia touched. Uh, Choppin. Choppin and his greatest hits. Copper Saliva. That's always fun. Techakovsky. Good old Techos. Ludwig van Beethoven. That's going to be great too. And also those ones. Now you'll need a bolt to go through the middle of your record. I didn't have something that fitted exactly, but this slightly smaller 6mm bolt has a countersink tapered head, which would be perfect to help it self align when it goes through the hole in the middle of the record. Then just give it a little spin and see if it all looks nice and aligned. Now it's all bolted up, we can take that and we can put it directly into the chuck of the drill and tighten it up. Check the speed settings on your drill. I'm going to kick this party off in number one, which is low speed. And we also want to check the direction of the record. I didn't know which way they turned at the time because I had no internet, but have a guess. If you said clockwise to your screen, you are correct. They spin clockwise. Make sure it spins clockwise. Now check to see that everything looks like it's staying reasonably flat. If not, just stop it and maybe kind of bend it into shape. And then you can grab your coffee cup and give it one last check that the needle is nice and sharp. This is the sound of my fingerprint playing music. We still need to make an arm to hold our coffee cup, but at this point we can actually give it a little test just to make sure the cup works. Just hold the cup nice and straight and make sure the slight angle on the needle points away from the way it's turning. And then very slowly pull on the trigger of the drill. It doesn't seem to sound too bad so far, so we can get making the rest of our record player. Now something I've noticed straight away is it's pretty hard to hold the trigger on the drill to keep the drill going at a consistent speed. So we need to set up something that will hold the trigger for us, but will also be variable so we can adjust the playback speed. I've found an old antenna clamp in the shed that should do perfectly. I've put a wing nut on there, this should make it nice and easy to tighten up to set our speed, and to then loosen to turn it off. With my sophisticated speed controller in operation, we can give the coffee cup another test. Now you may be wondering or have concerns that the needle is going to cause damage to the record, but you can relax, just because it's good to relax now and then. I'm pretty happy with how that's sounding and the record is riding nice and flat. Yes, somehow I expected a record in a drill to ride smoother than that. Okay, time to build the arm for the record player. Using your blowtorch glue stick, heat up some glue and apply some to the end of the ruler. Grab your coffee cup and jam it in your puddle of hot glue, but make sure the angle of the needle is pointing away from the length of the ruler. Also using the hot glue, I've put some on the plastic spoon and I'm using this as an angle brace just to stop the cup shaking about when it's playing some mad tunes. Pointy. We can now use the pen lid and glue that onto the ruler as well. This is going to be the balance and pivot point. Trying to find the right place to glue this is a little bit of guesswork. However, the ruler is handy here because it has measurements marked on it, which is a good reference as you make changes. I'm going to start out with the 170mm mark, just cause. We can now grab your chopsticks, separate them, and you can see why these work out quite well because they've got this nice tapered end which fits nicely into the pen lid. This will hold the arm of the record player, I'm not sure what we'll call it. Let's call it a post. Record arm post. Yeah. Yeah. Record arm post. Anyway, grab your record arm post and your spare F clamp 
and we're gonna clamp that onto the side of the other clamp. Now this is also a bit of guesswork, but the clamps are good because you can adjust it and change it until you find the right spot. Of course, there's probably information online about the dimensions of record players, how long the arm is and where this post should be, but it's all kind of guesswork because my phone is flat. So I'm guessing the basic idea is the position of the arm post pivot and the length of the arm has to allow the needle in the coffee cup to travel along the straightest arc possible from the outside edge of the record to the middle. If it's in the wrong position, it'll be pulling on the cup sideways too much and it will make the needle jump across the grooves on the vinyl, which will sound shit house. Normally a counterweight or two would help here, but because the record is so warped, I reckon it's gonna skip over the grooves anyway. So let's fire it up and see how it goes. Okay, it's not sounding too bad, but the arm is pulling too much from the outside in and the inside out. So I'm thinking the arm is a little too short. Time to crack out the old hot glue again and reposition the pen lid. Not bad. I think everything's positioned quite well now. And of course, with every win we have, we find new problems. So now you can see our arm posts can vibrate back and forth a little too easily. So we'll have to brace that up. And while we're gluing a chopstick on there, we might as well glue some more cutlery to the cup just to make sure everything is nice and strong. Because you don't want friends looking at it thinking that is a subpar battery drill coffee cup record player you've got there. With that complete, you're now ready to kick back and let some fine coffee cup tunes make your power outage woes drift away. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. If it is something you're gonna have a go at and you're having trouble, try different cup sizes and different cup brands. With the cup sizes, I found the small cups seemed to make a higher fidelity sound and the bigger cups were louder, but they would kind of distort the vocals. You can try different pins. Sewing stuff is good, don't use fish hooks. That ended, that ended badly. I'm Craig Turner, my YouTube channel is Turner81. Uh, subscribe if you're in the neighborhood. I'll see you next time.